Hello and welcome, my name is Meepolis, they, she, he, and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are doing a video I haven't done in many, many years, namely a graphic novel TBR. This time for the month of December. Let's just get straight to the books. First off, volume two of The Way of the House Husband is waiting for me at the library. I've binge read this sort of premise-based like comedy before to not great effect. So rather than wait until it's done before picking up the next volume, I wanted to sprinkle my reading of these volumes over time. Take good notes and make a wrap-up review once the time comes. I really enjoyed volume one. See my initial thoughts review. This is a cute manga series about an ex-Yakuza member who decides to turn his passion to being a stay-at-home husband. So far, each of the chapters have been fairly self-contained. Next up, I hope to tackle Dumb. Living Without a Voice by Georgia Weber. This is part of my ongoing anti-ableism reading project. Georgia Weber also illustrated another book I recently read and reviewed, Dancing After Ten. This is a memoir of a Canadian 20-something living without her voice. Then we have the fourth complete collection of Black Panther by Christopher Priest, published all in the late 90s, I believe. For the few of you following along at home, I am skipping volume three. My library decided to drop that volume from their Hoopla collection and owning volume one. I'm not really interested in having another example of Priest work for posterity. So I think I'm just going to jump ahead before moving on to Reginald Hoodlin, which I also own. And in no particular order, I am very excited to pick up Thirsty Mermaids by Cat Lay. This was a must read as soon as I finished reading Snapdragon, also by Cat Lay. So glad that review has been getting more hits recently. This sounds like a fun queer urban fantasy. Also, I am really hoping to finish reading the very short manga series Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuki Kamatani. If I had actually looked into the series before doing my initial thoughts review and seen it was just four volumes, I probably would have just waited to do the whole thing in one swoop. But we all mess up sometimes. The soft queer series is about a high school boy coming to terms with who he is and making friends along the way. I guess none of you all know this yet, but next week I hope to kick off a Sandman read through. So another book I'm planning on reading next month is Sandman, volume two, The Dollhouse. Need I say more? Cole Pauls was one of the creators featured at this year's Toronto Comic Arts Festival, so they've been on my TBR for a few months now. This month, I'm hoping to pick up their work, Pizza Punks. I really like pizza and punk, plus I find the art style pretty intriguing. Then I hope to pick up My Beijing by Ni Jun. It's a collection of short stories set in China, categorized as middle grade magical realism on Goodreads. I'm also going to read Invisible Differences, a story of Asperger's adulting and living a life in full color by Julie Dashes. Somewhat self-explanatory. It was originally published in French, and I should probably point out that Asperger's is no longer a diagnosis in the DSM, and that Hans Asperg was a not who sent a lot of people on the autism spectrum to their deaths. And finally, Another volume I want to read for no immediate review purposes is the second volume of Saintly Young Men. It's a thick one though, so we shall see. If you don't already know, that's the comedy manga series premised on Jesus and Buddha being modern day roommates in Tokyo. Volume 1 was pretty fun, and it's Christmas time, so why not? Bye y'all, keep reading in organized and capitalist oppression. And as always, Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional land holders which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Nanishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation. 